Okay, so thanks for joining me, ladies. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with who's on the screen today, my name is Tara Torres and I'm a clinical nutritionist here at Katie Integrative Gastroenterology with Dr. Rada Tamarisa. And I've been counseling patients in the areas of weight management, diabetes, and all things gut related since 2012. I'm also a certified personal trainer. I'm a mom of two toddlers and two dogs. And with me today is Katherine Gregory and Dara Parker. And if you guys want to introduce yourself really quick. Dara, you go first. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, my name is Dara Parker. I'm a certified integrative nutrition health coach in the Woodlands. And my mission is to empower women and busy families to incorporate nutrition and self-care practices into their everyday lives. Um, my area of focus is women's health and um, as it relates to disordered eating. So that's really what my focus is. And I've been coaching clients one-on-one -on -one for about two years now. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I'm Kathy Gregory. I'm also a health coach in the Woodlands area. Um, uh, Dara and I got our certifications through the same program, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which is one of the world's uh, largest programs. Um, I actually started my own uh, coaching business in 2017 and have been coaching uh, clients uh, since then, both individuals as well as groups. And um, kind of my focus is just uh, probably women's health too for the most part. I try to help busy women figure out ways to um, make their life a little bit better through uh, lifestyle changes, which obviously includes um, nutrition. That's a big piece of it. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, so I think we have a lot of overlap in what we do. And that being said, I think we've all been getting a lot of questions from our patients and clients. We related to immune support. And it just seems, um, given our current health crisis right now, that um, we wanna take a few minutes to address some of the things, the frequently asked questions, and some of the things that we can do um, amongst ourselves to support our immune system. So working in gastroenterology, we deal with a lot of issues ranging from minor gut issues to some of the more severe gut issues and we deal with a lot of immunocompromised patients. So it's only natural that we're getting a lot of these questions ourselves about what else our patients can do to protect themselves. And Dr. Tamarisa and myself addressed this a few weeks ago and we did a video discussing specifically what our patient demographic can do as far as taking their biologics, what they should or shouldn't stop, what else they can do, um, and specifically related to those immunocompromised patients. However, I'd like to address some of the more general guidelines for the rest of the population with both of you today. Um, so we'll just start with the media. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion by the media, medical and nutrition professionals um, everywhere discussing what you can do with your immune system. And I feel like it's been discussed thoroughly and I don't wanna harp too much on it, but I know that the general consensus is you know, load up on your vitamin C, your zinc, your vitamin D, to the point where vitamin C is completely sold out over the counter. You can't find it online. And so that's why I've enlisted both Kathy and Dar to help me because we're gonna do a three-part episode starting today talking about supplements and gut health, but also what you can do with your diet and what else you can do with lifestyle factors to kind of address your immune system and support it as a whole. So before you go and rush to get the next over-the-counter supplements, I want to caution everybody just to take some time and do some research on your supplements before buying. You know, they're not FDA regulated and so you want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence to research the company and make sure that they're doing their part as far as third-party testing to test each supplement for potency, purity, and um, quality. So it's important that we adjust, you know, address the supplement safety because there's been a recent surge in supplement sales. And I just want to make sure everybody's um, supplementing safely. Um, 
It's also really important to check your ingredients. Make sure you're checking to make sure what binders are being used or fillers are included. And of course the dosage, you know, it's hard to say that you can, um, or you can't really say that you're going to overdose on a supplement, but there is a time and a place and a correct dosage to use. There are recommended dietary allowances put out there for a reason, and we want to make sure that we don't cause any imbalances or cross reactions. So it's important to ask yourself, why are you taking these supplements? Have you spoken with a medical or nutrition professional and have you been given guidance to start these supplements? Barring no major health issues, most of the population should be able to get their nutrition needs met through diet alone and maybe with a simple multivitamin. So we'll talk about diet a lot more with Dari later about where we can get all of the, the things that we need through specific foods and she's going to address all of that in a lot more detail. Um, but with everybody taking all of these supplements, I just wonder if we've addressed any underlying health issues. So supplements alone aren't going to be what protect you from the coronavirus or the flu or food poisoning, right? If anything, they're just going to act like a band-aid when there's a much bigger problem at hand. So if you are a person dealing with reflux, heartburn, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, or you just don't go to the bathroom regularly every single day, there's something out of balance with your gut. And that's something that we need to address first when it comes to supporting our immune system. We know that 80% of your immune system is derived from your gut. So it would make sense that if your gut is fighting off this case of dysbiosis, whether it's too little good bacteria or too much bad bacteria that your immune system is going to be too bogged down dealing with this dysbiosis to be able to fight off a uh, invader like food poisoning or corona. So when patients come to me with these symptoms of gut dysbiosis, it's important to understand that we do a thorough medical history review and in some cases we have to run tests to really figure out what the underlying cause is because we know that throwing medications or supplements at our patients isn't gonna solve the root issue. So I would say that you know, 80% of the patients that I deal with have some sort of bacteria dysfunction, whether it's that too little good bacteria or too much bad bacteria. And so we've developed a protocol where we must first repair, restore, or I'm sorry, remove, repair, and restore the bacteria. And it's just a combination of medication, herbal supplements, and most importantly, a dietary protocol to get these patients back to where they need to be and their immune system functioning that much better. With everything that I've said, my, my main goal is to point out that we need to address our health as a whole and not just take a vitamin or follow just one diet. It's not just exercise. It's a combination of all of these things as one that's going to get our immune system functioning as a whole. So Tara, um, I have, like you said, we have lots of clients that are asking uh, lots of good questions about uh, just being able to support uh, their, immune, their immunity. And so what do you feel is the best way for someone to do that? I think it's a full circle effect of not just taking the supplements, but making sure that you're eating correctly, making sure that you're getting out and you're exercising, um, getting that vitamin D while maintaining social distancing, um, practicing your meditation, whatever mental, spiritual work that you need to do, because we know that in functional medicine, all of these play a role in the overall uh, health function of your system. Do you think we can have a healthy uh, immune system without addressing that gut dysbiosis? No, because again, 80% of your immune system is derived in your gut. So when your gut isn't functioning at optimal capacity, it only makes sense that it's going to be that much more, that much less able to fight off any foreign viruses or bacteria. Yeah, and I'll, I'll interject here too and say that we know too that we are not even absorbing the good vitamins <clears throat> from the food. Even if we're eating a great diet, if we have that gut dysbiosis, 
we're not absorbing those good nutrients until we address uh, the gut issues or the leaky gut. And so um, would you agree that that's... Right. So that was one of the things I wanted to point out earlier is a lot of times we have to wait to do micronutrient evaluations until after we've addressed the underlying cause. Because again, I mean, when we do those evaluations at the beginning of a treatment plan, we already know that your, gut's not, your gut isn't functioning and it's unable to absorb all of those things. So we may initially, you know, based off of our analysis and your symptoms, can, we can tell what vitamins you need. And then we'll do a more thorough and detailed evaluation at the end of your treatment when it becomes more of a repair and restore. So when we're talking about supplements, you know, when you decide to do that, uh, don't, do you feel it's probably best to consult with a physician before just deciding on your own what uh, supplements may or may not be best for what's going on in your body? Beyond taking a, like a fish oil or a multivitamin, when you really start getting into those individual nutrients and figuring out exactly what your body needs and what dosage um, is required and whether or not there are any genetic factors or other medical conditions that could be playing a role in that, you absolutely should get the help of a, a health coach at the least, if not a nutritionist or a doctor. Dara, what are your thoughts around, uh, you know, as far as like what foods do you think are wise to like, if we could start something right now, what would, what would, what would be your suggestion? Um, I think some of the things that I recommend to clients who think they have, uh, you know, gut dysbiosis and really, you can't really tell until you start with a food diary and, and seeing those, um, you know, those symptoms throughout the, the food diary process, but um, definitely organic bone broth. We've seen um, great things happen, even just me personally, as I've, as I've been able to heal from Lyme with a, with a healthy diet. Um, you know, organic bone broth, turmeric really helps with the inflammation in the gut. Um, collagen, if it's grass-fed, if it's the right uh, potency, um, those are some of the ones that I usually recommend. And additionally, um, you know, and it's bio-individual. This is another thing that probably I would, ch I, you should check with your, um, with your doctor about whether these are good for you or not. But hydration, um, a lot of us forget about the importance of drinking water and how much our gut needs that also to help absorb those nutrients. I think it gets lost in the shuffle sometimes with drinking water is, is big too. So. Yeah, and Kathy, I know later on we're going to talk about the full picture as far as taking care of your immune system. If you want to kind of give everybody an idea of what you're going to be talking about in addition to food and supplements, what else can patients do? So yeah, I was going to, uh, I'll briefly hit a few of my top, you know, of course the healthy diet is going to make a big difference, um, but you touched on this uh, before, getting out and exercising regularly, uh, some sort of moderate activity, uh, at least I'd say five times a week for 30 minutes a day is, is going to help. Uh, what, what Dara just said, touched on the hydration piece is, is really important. Uh, sleep also, very important piece to all this. Um, and then just figuring out, um, like minimizing your stress. So uh, a lot of times we just kind of, we have chronic stress and we don't really spend much time trying to understand what causes the stress and then ways in which we can minimize that effect that it has on our body. And those are probably my top um, lifestyle changes that we can begin that will really help to support the immune system uh, right away. Yeah. So again, it's just full circle. You know, all of these things um, work to an extent on their own. But I think unless you're doing an, all, the, all of the work on all of these things, working on your sleep, getting exercise, um, stress management, working on eating a whole foods diet and making sure that it's very well rounded and has a variety of the things that you need. Um, in addition to 
uh, taking supplements, which may help, um, and addressing ultimately any of those underlying health conditions that uh, you are dealing with, um, and just really taking the reins of your health and making sure that you are functioning as optimal as you can be so that you are that much more healthy and able to um, fight off disease as it comes in the future. Yeah, I think one of the things that, um, that I'd love to say, because it's important is not for people not to get overwhelmed. Um, I think that we try to do all of the things all at once. And um, just like we were talking about, you know, if you think that you have a gut issue, start there. You know, if you think, if you haven't been drinking any water, start with a glass of water. If you haven't exercised at all, start with one lap around the block. Um, I think it's easy to get overwhelmed quickly and then for people to say, well, this is not working. But um, there are so many of us who love and are passionate about helping people find, find those little changes that they can make and, um, and really live their best life and feel better from the inside out, so. Yeah, I think small changes over a period of time are what end up building up to that ultimate big reveal and that big change. Absolutely. So um, I just wanna say thanks for joining me. I'm looking forward to seeing the next two videos that we put together. Um, we'll talk more in depth about food and some of the things that patients can do if they're not able to find that vitamin C supplement. Um, I know Dara's gonna talk about where we can find that in addition to other supplements and um, hit on some of those lesser known foods, right? And then Kathy is gonna be talking about some of the other things that we can be doing um, just to manage all of our, our lifestyle changes. Yep.